Hello! Just waiting for this to finish loading. There it is. We are loaded. We are ready to go. Alright, I'm just looking at Hoopla. Just scrolling through Hoopla to see what's on there this week. It's always something interesting and fun and new on Hoopla. Oh, I just watched that movie. Christmas in the City. It has a Shanti in it. If you're if you're like me and you you grew up in the nineties and the, the early aughts, you know Shanti. Um she plays like Cruella DeVille, basically, except not puppies, just Christmas. She hates Christmas. Um, so anyway, I was browsing through Hoopla because I wanted to remind everybody that Hoopla has uh, given us a wonderful gift for November, which is bonus borrows. If you remember in the summer, actually no, in the spring, um, Hoopla gave us bonus borrows, which is basically you don't lose a play credit or a, um, a borrow credit. Um, if you look, if you, uh, it's been a long day, if you rent or check, check out one of the items that's on Hoopla, uh, bonus borrows list. So there are, you know, I, I always show you guys all these banners at the top. Um, but don't forget if you check under genres, they'll have like certain sections. You could do all movies or one of their highlighted ones. I think there's also um, under the movies tab, uh, especially in honor of tomorrow, there was a bonus borrows. Um, I think it's, yeah, well, we're in the movie section. Movies about uh, to honor veterans. I don't know if any of those are in bonus borrows, but that is on Hoopla right now, and that is a um, featured collection. And um, bonus borrows go across. Um, TV series soundtrack for The Mandalorian, um, books, music, and uh, movies. So that's really exciting. Um, oh, there's the audiobook for The Queen's Gambit, which I know everybody's talking about from Netflix right now, but the audiobook of the book is on there right now, which is pretty exciting. Oh, look, Hair Love is on. Hair Love is on audiobook. That's awesome. I love that. Um, Oh, I've been hearing a lot about the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I know that, coincidence or not, with the title, um, is that a lot of book clubs have been doing the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and that's that's here in an audiobook. Um, fried Green Tomatoes and Steel Magnolias Meet Drac Dracula in the Southern Flavored Supernatural Thriller set in the 90s about a woman's book club that must protect its suburban community from a mysterious and handsome stranger who turns out to be a real monster. Um, sounds really interesting. <laughs> um, and then let's see what's on ebooks. Oh, Fall Cooking, Inspiration, The Great Big Pumpkin Book, Forest Feast, Savory Baking. Um, what else is on ebooks? I just, I love to browse through Hoopla, and I figured that was something that I would do, um, when I was getting ready to jump on here and talk to everybody today. So, hi, everybody. Um, I'm, like, so hooked on scrolling through Hoopla. Uh, so, yes, hi, everybody. Um, it's Tuesday. It's after 7, so that means it's time for us to chat about books. Um... I have I have with me tonight probably a mistake because it's late and I don't need caffeine, but right and I always tell you guys well I'm not drinking coffee tonight because I don't need caffeine but here I have a um, citrus mate which is yerba mate which does have caffeine but it also had um, it was a loose leaf tea I love loose leaf tea um, it has citrus peel and oh, I can't remember what else in it but also sunflower petals I don't know I'm still waiting for it to cool down a little bit. And I put some honey in it, so I'm really excited, and it's just nice and warm. And I know it was kind of warm out, but you know, today, it was actually gorgeous out today. I had all my windows open when I got home. Um, but now that uh, it gets dark out so early, it just, it doesn't matter whether it's warm or chilly. I'm like, all right, time for a cup of tea or hot cocoa. Like, it's just what happens when it gets dark out so early, right? Um so good. It just smells really herbal, but it's a little too hot still. I think I just, I brewed it like 10, 15 minutes ago, but it's very hot. Oh no, it's drinkable. Oh, it's good. 
yeah, it's very, very herbal tasting and I can taste the, I can taste kind of like this bitter but bright flavor from the orange and I can taste the honey. I love honey. Um, so that's, that's my cozy drink for today. Um, I'm going to, after this video, I'm going to read some more. Uh, so I will enjoy my cup of tea while I read, which is just like the best thing in the world, right? Um, <laughs> So, um, as usual during this video, please go ahead and let me know what you have been reading. If you've read anything interesting lately, you have anything you want to share with me, or as always, if there's something that you read that you did not like, that's okay too. I love to know everything. Um, oh, she's coming. She's coming. Um, she was actually sitting in this spot before I got ready to do this video and I was like, oh, I'm gonna need this spot from her. And um, and then she just actually just got up of her own will and I didn't need to, I didn't need to shove her off, which was great. Um, so what have I been reading this week? Not that much. I finished, um, I had started and got through most of a really awesome, did I talk about it? I know I talked about it in my Teen Reads video. If you watch Teen Reads, um, You'll, you'll know. Uh, I read the last Halloween. It's a really awesome graphic novel by Abby Howard. It started as a webcomic uh, and the uh, the entirety of like book one, the beginning of the story from the webcomic was published into a book. Oh my god, I love it. I'm like so obsessed with it. Um, and book two still has not been, to my knowledge, has not been published or have a release date, but it is online on Abby Howard's website. Um, it's been so long since I've read webcomics when I was in high school back when webcomics were um, so fun to read and I kept up with a couple of them, um, which, I mean, I haven't kept up with webcomics in probably since college. Um, but it's just nice, nice to read. Um, and it was nice. It's nice when you enjoy a webcomic and you're a fan to like hold it in your hands. Hey, do you want to come talk about books with us? I don't know if you can hear her when she makes these little like chirpy noises. Yeah, she's here. <gasps> there she is. The star. It's truly, she's truly the star of all of the videos. Oh, oh, careful. She just so the the arm of my couch where she is now is where I keep my remote controls. Um, and I was watching Supermarket Sweep before I started this video when I was uh, reading and getting my tea. Um, I had some sweep on in the background. And so I had the remote right here to pause it <laughs> when I went live and she just knocked that over. So that's that no noise that you just heard. And she's going to do the same thing she always does, which is try to ooh, sleep on my laptop and then I knock out the... All right. We have to move it away from her. This is becoming a new trend. Anyway, hi everyone. Um, so I read, please stop licorice. I read, uh, finished The Last Halloween by Abby Howard. I'm just like obsessed with it. Um, and I've just been recommending it to anybody who loves um, spooky and unique art styles and um, Anybody who loves web comics and to anybody who loves graphic novels, like I'm just so, so jazzed by it. Um, thank you for staying over there. You're cute though. Uh, <laughs> and then I finally got to Christina Lauren's In a Holidays. I'm not that far yet, but I will probably still finish it tonight. Um, it's going pretty fast now that I've gotten started. I, I know I talk about this all the time. I always have a hard time getting started with books. I have a really hard time getting into it um, and getting started. And then once once I get going, you like can't stop me. So um, it's really cute so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'll do a full review, a full review of it next week uh, when I talk about what I've read next week. And I have a couple of things on my night table that I want to read next week as well once I finish this one. Uh, mostly YA. Mostly YA. I have a couple of books that I want to read uh, so I can review for Native American Heritage Month uh, by some uh, YA authors. There's been uh, a lot of good 
uh, publicity and push for some of the um, indigenous authors and I'm here for it totally here for it um, we already had uh, quite a few in the young adult room and not quite a few but like a nice number um, and I got two more since stay-at-home orders ended which I'm really looking forward to so I'm gonna try to read those uh, in the next week or two um, I don't know I don't know what's next on my list for adult books I have a couple in mind um, I still have um, what is it my wife says you may want to marry me I have a copy here I have an advanced readers copy sitting on my shelf that I've had for a while um, so I may want to read that and then I have, I have a couple others that I think have been on my radar that I know are getting a lot of good press and are really popular so we shall see I'm very distracted by she's giving herself a bath like this is I'm really glad she's not laying on the laptop like she tries to all the time because then you would just hear these noises that when she does it in my ear it just makes me so annoyed <laughs> <laughs> um, alright, so what do we, we talked about Hoopla, we talked about tea, we talked about what I read this week, we talked about licorice, we saw licorice, um, so let's go over some of this week's new releases. Um, a lot of this week's new releases already got checked out, uh, this morning when I was pulling holds this morning, we, we saw a lot of them go out already, which was really exciting. I love that. I love when I order a book and I, you know, I read the reviews, I follow the bestseller list, I follow the buzz. And when I read a book, read a book review, and I think that it's something that's interesting, um, and then I see the book go out, I mean, that just like makes my day, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we have got today for new releases. I have a couple on Libby, and then I have a couple that were not on Libby that, um, I think I have some reviews, uh, not reviews, but I have some pages up here. But, um, we have a new Michael Connolly, The Law of Innocence. That went out right away this morning. Psh, gone. That went out right away. Um, it is available on Libby. Um, it does have a holds list because, of course, okay, be careful, licorice, please don't knock the lamp over. One of these days, I'm just going to have to end this video abruptly because she's going to have done something to get my attention. That's going to be like, oh. Um, this one also went out right away this morning. Uh, Barbara Taylor Bradford has a new House of Falconer novel in the Lion's Den. Um, this is book number two. The first one is Master His Fate, which is also available on Libby. No waits right now. So if you haven't started this series yet and you know you like this author, um, In the Lion's Den is the second one. And it's here. No audiobook as of yet. Um, ooh, historical. I'm going down the line. Fiction, literature, historical fiction. Let's, oh, well, let me show you the... There we go. There's the cover. There we go. Um, all right, so that's... I don't always like to read the blurbs when they're part of a series because... But maybe I... I don't know. Um, because I feel like sometimes if you're far gone... Oh, but this is only number two. Whereas, like, the Law of Innocence is number six. If you know it, you know it. And people obviously know what they're waiting for. It. The same... I mean, like I said, the same. This one had a hold on at Brighton early this morning when I got into work, which was wonderful. Um... Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, James Lionel Falconer has risen quickly from a mere shop worker to being the right-hand man of Henry Malvern, head of the most prestigious shipping company in London, with Malvern's daughter Alexis running away to the country after a terrible tragedy and refusing to return. Uh, James's ascent to the head of the company seems inevitable, but even a charmed life like James's is not without its setbacks. A terrible fire threatens to end his merchant career before it's had a chance to truly begin. 
Mrs. Ward, James' former paramour, has a secret that could change his life forever, and his distaste for Alexis Malvern is slowly growing into feelings of quite a different sort. Can James continue to be the master of his own fate, or will all of his charm, intelligence, and wit finally fail him when he has to enter the lion's den? Spanning the years 1889 to 1882 um, is, Bra is Bradford at her historical storytelling best. So, um... I mean, it seems like there will be more. It doesn't say, like, the final, and I know a lot of these popular authors try, try to make their series long-running. Um, so, yeah, this is only the second one. Um, we have another Joe Nesbo. Uh, this is The Kingdom. I don't think that this is part of a series. I can never remember. Oh, this one's available as an audiobook, which is awesome. No, they're not part of, oh, that's, the other one is part of a series. The one that came out, uh, Knife and the Thirst, that's a series. This one is a standalone. Okay, that's why I'm confused, because I know I'm always ordering from Joan Esbo that's part of a series that we want to make sure we continue. Um, two Brothers, One Small Town. Um, A Lifetime of Dark Secrets. A tense and atmospheric standalone, oh, it says it right there, Alyssa. Just keep reading the description. It says it right there. Roy has never left the quiet mountain town he grew up in, unlike his brother Carl, who couldn't wait to get out and escape his troubled past. Just like everyone else in town, Roy believed Carl was gone for good. But Carl has big plans for his hometown, and when he returns with a mysterious new wife and a business opportunity that seems too good to be true, uh, simmering tensions begin to surface and unexplained deaths in the town's past come under new scrutiny. Soon, powerful players set their sights on taking the brothers down by exposing the role in the town's sordid history. Ooh. But Roy and Carl are survivors and no strangers to violence. Roy has always protected his younger brother. As the body count rises, though... Roy's loyalty to family is tested, but then Roy finds himself inextricably drawn to Carl's wife, Shannon, an attraction that will have devastating consequences. Roy's world is coming apart, and soon there will be no turning back. He'll be forced to choose between his own flesh and blood and a future he has never dared to believe possible. Uh... <laughs> thrilling. Um, but thrillers are the rage. Thrillers are all the rage right now. Um, now, is this part of a series, or is it just like a companion? Um, so, oops. Um, so the next one that I have is by Anthony Horowitz. This is Moonflower Murders, and I can't tell if it's a companion or a sequel because the other one that he wrote recently was Magpie Murders, but I think that this is uh, a standalone as well. Nope. Nope. No, it's not. Here in the description has the answer. Um, sometimes Libby does have them labeled when they go together, like I've been showing you in a series, and sometimes they don't, so you gotta just kind of know. Or a really good tip for that is... Um, and I use this all the time. If you have been in the teen room, you'll notice that I have books in a series labeled. Um, and I actually have the, the number of the books on the spines in the teen room because it gets very confusing um, with all of the trilogies and duologies and... Um, not everybody on staff is really familiar with the YA stuff as we're as familiar with the adult stuff. So when a teen calls and they want like the second or third book in a series and maybe I'm not there, whatever. I've numbered everything in the teen room. Um, wow, where was I going with this story? <laughs> I use Goodreads. That's what I was going to say. I use Goodreads to help me figure out where things go in a story. Um, if you don't have a Goodreads account and you're a big reader, you should have a Goodreads account. It's just wonderful um, to have, um, and it will help you keep track of the order of books in a series. That's where I was going with that story. I get so excited about the projects that I do, and then I just... All right. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Huh. 
Hi, okay. Um, retired publisher Susan Ryland is living the good life. She's running a small hotel on a Greek island with her long-term boyfriend, Andreas. It should be everything she's always wanted, but is it? She's exhausted with the responsibilities of making everything work on an island where nothing ever does. And truth be told, she's beginning to miss London. And then the Treherns come to stay. The strange and mysterious story they tell about an unfortunate murder that took place on the same day and in the same hotel in which their daughter was married. A picturesque inn on the Suffolk coast. On the Suffolk? Suffolk? Wow, words. Suffolk coast named Farlingay Hale. Fascinates Susan and piques her editor's instincts. Of her former writers, the late Alan Conway, Arthur, author of the fictional Magpie Murders, knew the murder victim, an advertising executive named Frank Paris, and once visitor to the island. Conway based the third book in his detective series, Atticus Pund Takes the Cake, on that very crime. Their daughter Cecily read Conway's mystery and believed the book proves that the man convicted of Paris's murder, a Romanian immigrant who was the hotel's handyman, is innocent. Then when the Treherns reveal that Cecily is now missing, Susan knows that she must return to England to find out what really happened. Clever, suspenseful, full of twists that will keep readers guessing each with each revelation and clue. A deviously dark take on vintage English crime fiction. So again, that's Anthony Horowitz, Mag uh, Moonflower Murders, not Magpie Murders. That was the other one. <laughs> um, and then I let's see what I have. A couple more. Uh, I think up here. Let's take. Oh, this time next year we'll be laughing by Jacqueline Winspear. It's a memoir. You know, we got a lot of memoir fans around. This one I actually think is sitting in a box waiting to be unboxed. I think. Um, I can't remember if I've seen it or if I just know that I've been waiting for it. Um, I think it'll be quite popular. Um, as engaging as her Maisie Dobbs novels, and I know a lot of uh, people in our town are fans of the Maisie Dobbs novels. Um, after 16 novels, Jacqueline Winspear has taken the bold step of turning to memoir, revealing the hardships and joys of her family history. Both shockingly frank and deftly restrained, her story tackles the difficult, poignant, and fascinating family accounts of her paternal grandfather's shell shock, her mother's evacuation from London during the Blitz, her soft-spoken animal-loving father's torturous assignment to an explosives team during World War II, her parents' years living with the Romany Gypsies, and Winspear's own childhood picking hops and fruit on farms in rural Kent, capturing her ties to the land and her dream of being a writer at its very inception. Eye-opening and heartfelt. Uh, so again, that's this time next year we'll be laughing. Um, what else? Oh, this one already went out. Um, Megan Rapinoe's One Life, another memoir. See, we have memoir fans around here. Um, the gold, Olympic gold medalist and a Women's World Cup champion. I know that Megan has a lot of fans. A lot, a lot of fans. Um, a galvanizing, galvanizing force for social change. She urges us, bye, okay. She just, yeah, she left to go sit on the cozy pile of blankets, because who wouldn't? Um, she urges all of us to take up the mantle with actions big and small and to continue the fight for justice and equality. Um, it talks about her professional success on the field, but becoming an icon and ally to millions, boldly speaking out on the issues that matter most. She's become one of the faces of the equal pay movement, and her tireless activism for LGBTQ rights has earned her global support. Um, so this is her thoughtful and unapologetic discussion of social justice and politics. Raised in a conservative small town in Northern California, the youngest of six, Megan was four years old when she kicked her first soccer ball. Um, I love kind of hearing those origin stories about how people get to where they are, especially when they're um, just look up, looked up to uh, so much so, like she is. Uh, using anecdotes for her own life and career from suing the United States Soccer Federation alongside her teammates over gender discrimination to her widely publicized refusal to visit the White House. Megan discusses the obligation we all have to speak up and reveals the impact each of us can have on our communities. Um, 
what a what a fascinating person and I just feel like sorry we're moving back over here because the light's better hello um I just love I love um you know like a lot of our young folk and kids look up to uh sports stars so it's really nice to see them speaking out um just to support themselves and others and I love it when they write memoirs um and it's good it you know, it's just nice to have because we often just see them as sports figures and to see what else they do uh, with their platform is just so wonderful to see. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I love memoirs too, just to know more about uh, the people that we, especially when it's a memoir of somebody who is in the public light. A lot of memoirs are and some of them aren't and whatever. Uh, I just love memoirs and I love hearing about people and the things that they do and the things that they stand for and uh, the things that are important for them especially you know like I said when we think of sports stars a lot of people are like oh look at this look at this champion world cup champion and Olympic medalist but there's so much more to these people which is why um, hearing more about their stories and their own voices is just so wonderful um, this one also already went out this morning um, first principles what America's founders learned from our Greeks and Romans and how that shaped the company that's by Thomas E Ricks I thought that sounded absolutely fascinating and uh, somebody agreed with me apparently <laughs> um, one of the reviews for it is on every page I learned something new read it every night if you want to restore your faith in our country um, a revelatory new book about the founding fathers examining their educations and in particular their devotion to the ancient Greek and Roman classics and how that influence would shape their ideals and the new American nation um, so that's I mean that's really really awesome um, studying works of Plutarch Epic Epicurus Aristotle Cato Cicero um, the rhetoric of Rome uh, let's see talking a lot about Adams and Jefferson, Madison. I mean, this is so cool. Um, and so I thought that was a really interesting one and the reviews for it, uh, like I said, were, were good. And I'm glad that somebody else was excited by it too. We have, like I always say, we have a lot of history buffs in town. So I'm really glad to uh, feed that knowledge and uh, obsession that some, uh, like healthy obsession, you know when I say obsession. <laughs> <laughs> that many of um, our people in town seem to have. Um, just checking to see if I missed anything. I don't think so. I think we're all we're all good there. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, um, technically, the library is closed for curbside tomorrow in honor of Veterans Day, but we still have our yoga for kids in the morning here on Facebook with Miss Danielle. And I am still doing book hooks because I still got to eat. And I figured um, I would share a soup recipe with everybody from my favorite cookbook, which is the America's Test Kitchen cookbook. Um, we have the newest version at the library. We just got it in. Um, uh, it was just released. It's for uh, up through their 2021 season, I guess is what they're calling it. Big, heavy cookbook. I have it on my Kindle, and I know that there's a digital version. I don't know which year that is available on... Uh, should be on Libby because I've had it on my Kindle before. I used it a lot during stay-at-home orders for book cooks. It was my favorite cookbook, so I'm going to make some soup tomorrow. So check out the recipes on our website if you want to follow along. Uh, it's broccoli cheddar, so I think most of the ingredients are in the house. I already had so much frozen broccoli. Um, I always keep cheese around. I think pretty much all of the ingredients were already available in the house, which is nice. Um, and it is getting cooler. Um... Although well, it was warm today, I don't remember. I think tomorrow's supposed to be kind of warm, so maybe the wrong day for soup. Never the wrong day for soup, right? Um, we have our um, teen and adult craft on Thursday. Um, so even if you didn't get a kit, it's really easy to follow, and the supplies are super inexpensive. We're making one of those trendy um, yarn and hoop wall hangings, so you can check that out. The video will be here on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. 
um, yeah, we just have a lot of exciting stuff going on. So don't forget to always keep checking our website and our social here so you can see what's going on and what we have in store for you all. And as always, if you are looking for some book suggestions, you can always reach out to any of us, uh, give us a call when we're at the library, or fill out the book match form at the top of our website. Um, I think that is it for me today. Licorice is still giving herself a bath, so she's not going to say goodnight to you. I'm going to finish my cup of tea, um, and I'm going to go ahead and read my Christina Lauren book, um, which, by the way, is, I mean, it is the book version of a wonderful Hallmark movie, which is basically all that I've been watching. So, aside from catching up on Supermarket Sweep, um, just watching only Hallmark movies, um, and, and there are, there are some Lifetime and Cheesy Holiday movies, like I said, available on Hoopla, so if you're one of those people who is like, there is no such thing as time, there is no such thing as months and seasons, I'm gonna start watching holiday movies now, they're available on Hoopla, <laughs> and they're a lot of fun, and they're just heartwarming and nice. So, alright, yes, that is it for me for tonight, um, yeah, always let me know what you're reading and let me know if you need any help choosing new books and I will see you all soon. All right, everyone. Good night.